How's it going, everybody? Beaver Works Diecast Racing, and we're going to do another build video. I know that some people have been saying, you know, we like the race videos, we don't like the build videos, but you know, I'm going to do a build video anyways, because you just got to. And I do this thing called the Jewelry Car Class, and this is a beautiful green light 1973 Cadillac Sedan DeVille. It's got the rubber tires. This thing is completely stock. And what we're going to do is turn this into one of the wheel swap jewelry car class vehicles that we've done. Here's an M2. Seen this one already. It used to have rubber wheels. And then we put the match boxes inside there with axle tubes and had to hog it out a little bit. But kept the top half looking all m2 spiffy and original right there's that one we've all seen this green light same idea blues brothers even got the hood in the engine still working but has been swapped out with the matchbox wheels again same thing axle tubes i didn't do much hogging out on this one because we're actually able to get the wheels to fit so, that one worked out pretty good. And another M2. You've seen this one. This is back from Junkyard Joust from the Beaverworks team. Same thing. This is one of the first ones I did. And this one wasn't able to keep the engine in, but you can see the work and the axle tubes down inside there. How much I had to hog out the wheel wells to get the big FTEs underneath this thing. There's a lot of work on this one, but enough to keep the top half looking original. And then I put a bunch of the Rust Belt Racing decals on it to send it down to Aaron at Junkyard Joust. So this Cadillac Coupe de Ville is going to be getting the wheel swap with axle tubes and keeping the top half nice and original even though it's a crummy color but this is for my uh track crew the secret agents this is going to be the new addition to their collection all right let's get into this Look at the details on this thing. We just, we just got to camp out. Look at this for a second. Green light is just killing it on the details. I'm going to keep those axles and those wheels, but they're going to come off for now. Such a good job. This is why... I like doing these jewelry cars and keeping the original paint jobs and detail work. Because you're not going to be able to come back and finish that off again like that. Like even trying to put that pinstripe on would be impossible. Gosh, look at the work on those headlights, that grill. So you got to keep, I want to keep all that. The details are amazing on this. And so all we want to do is swap it out on the bottom so we can make it perform on the track. I think we've got some surrogate wheels here. they are going to take them off of this matchbox here because they've got the chrome. And I'm not worried about the axle length. And I've noticed that these matchbox wheels, they perform pretty good. They're pretty fast. So we're going to dig them out of this thing and put them into that thing. All right.
All right, let's get caught up. What is going on? All right, first of all, these guys came out nice and clean. So, see those? Might use them for something. Display of some sort. I don't squeeze the wheels back on right now because there's barbs on the end of that and there's only so many times that's going to go in and out of there before it gets sloppy. So, if you're going to keep them and store them, don't worry about squeezing those wheels back on again until you use them. Anyways, here's the surrogates. This is what's going on. And comparably, they are roughly the same size, maybe a tiny bit smaller, but they are definitely, definitely wider. All right. And then we've got the chassis part. This is going to have to vanish. I think I'm actually going to go back and uh, do some marker lines on this. But this whole piece is going to come out. This piece all up in here has got to come out because we're going to have to hog it in so far. And the nice thing about these M2s is they got a good channel there. <laughs> Because we're going to have to axle tube this. This is the stuff I use. 116 by 0.014 ID. But you got to get the length so that it will still fit inside these wheel wells, which I will go in there and grind out all that paint and smooth it off with a buffing wheel so that we can buy a little bit of space in there. All right, so that's what's coming up. All right, we got the bulk of that material removed, and now I'm gonna switch discs so we can go in there and take that back a little bit. And that's gonna give me the distance. How short, I've gotta cut the brass, which I believe is gonna go between here and here. I'm actually gonna cut out this little hold down spot which is not a problem because uh blah 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 um, blah 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 right okay all right you can see how much it removed the little nubs right there and taking the nub off on this side squared it up in there and clean that hole up a little bit more but that's basically what you want to do and you got to take some material back to there the whole fender piece out all that other freaking stuff that was in there all has to come out that came out now I'm just going to take this line down to that one mill millimeter or so and file it, flush it, smooth it out, get to look just like that side. And same thing down here. You can see where that is all material that's going to get removed along that line right there. 
I'm just going to take all of this bulk out here and just leave the recessed tube so I can set my tube. Right? All right, so this is about all the work I need to do on this thing on the bottom half. There was cleaned all these channels out here, took all that out, removed a lot of material, but all just to get that surface real smooth and real tight on all four. And then we got the axle tube here and what going to do next is just chop the tube off oh there's that and you gotta if you got the sawmill on your drill dremel that's the one you're going to want to use because you got to cut this thing square right just so that uh you don't collapse the tube <laughs> Either that or you have to come back and file the end open. So, basically, you get it in there, find the length you want. And I know I'm going to file, so I don't mind having just that little bit of extra. But there we go. Mark it off. And uh, I get my vise, chop that one off, and then we can file it down. All right, so we got everything cut in sh sized to go inside a little slots, just perfect. Now, I'm going to save you the video of me trying to, uh, well, not trying, I managed to get them cut and squared off, no problem, but, uh, I didn't do a very good job videoing it, so we have to skip that part in the video. So we got those in there now. I want to, they're not glued in yet. I'm gonna work on these axles now though. I'm gonna polish them while they're still together and then snip them. Find out how much space I'm going to need for them to slide on in there. But I like these matchbox wheels because they perform pretty good before you even give them the polish. And then they're gonna get the polish and then they're gonna go in. And I believe for all the cutting and hacking, we have got enough room inside there for them to fit inside of the chassis. Which is cool, but we'll get to that. First of all, what I'm going to do is polish these guys, and then cut them, and then mount them into the tubes before I mount the tubes into the chassis. Capiche? All right. Nice and shiny. I just in case you guys forgot. Look at that. Mm -hmm. 
Look at the performance you get out of that that way. And compared to the side that's not polished. Right. It's also a good idea to make sure you remember to cut that little air hole inside of your axle tube just so that you can relieve the pressure. I've actually had axles push back out because you kind of get a little piston effect in there. So you cut that little relief hole in there to take care of that. Works awesome. All right, while we did the chassis to do its thing, we're going to uh, put some uh, s screws into this guy. You see there's little tiny holes on green lights in there. So we're using smaller screws, smaller drill bit, and bigger magnifying glasses, right? <laughs> right. I'm not exactly sure what size drill bit this is. It's tiny. We'll go with that. I kind of match up the size of the drill bit by the screw. Matching the shanks. And I have a big stack of drill bits in a pile that aren't labeled. So that brings this drill bit into the category of tiny. Almost itty bitty, but not quite. Between itty bitty and small is tiny. And that's this guy. Hey. Might be able to get a little more depth out of that. All right, we didn't come through the top for good. And I think we're deep enough to pump a screw into that. All right. All right, had to go through a couple of different screws, but we found one. And it uh, had to bury some threads in there with the top, but it's uh, holding good. That's what you want. All right. One more to go on the back. Oh, yeah. All right. Again, didn't blow through the top. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, some dig some threads into this. All right, the first couple of cores. Here down a couple more.
I think that is good to go. All right. See some nice cut threads in there. This bag of screws is a little bit shorter than that bag of screws. So I'm going to use the short ones on this because it doesn't have very far to go. Oh, yeah. Snug enough to hold. There we go. Screws are installed. All right, so it looks like so I got the little hump right here on this guy, right there. That makes it so I can't get it onto the axle jig to make sure these things are going in straight. But you want to know something, you take a look at those. That trough is so tight, these things got no play either way once you get those axle tubes in there. So I'm, I didn't use the axle jigs on the rest of them when it comes to the green light because they got that big trough and most of the M2s got it too. That once you set that brass axle tube inside there, it's going to fit tight. All right. And the next thing is going to be whether we do JB weld or whether we do the epoxy. Now, my experience, the epoxy has never failed yet on any of the cars that I built for putting the axles down. And JB weld, same thing. It's tough. But the biggest difference is the epoxy. This thing's going to be done and stuck in 30 minutes. And then in six hours, it's going to be hard and glassy and cured. Whereas JB weld... You wait until tomorrow, no matter what you do. <laughs> if you're lucky. If you mixed it right. So, I'm going to go with the epoxy. And I'm going to epoxy these guys in there. All right. You ready for this? Also, a super good idea to make sure you put your little... Uh, gussets or uh, protectors in here. And keep any uh helps keep the position of the axle and stops any glue from traveling up the tube and getting into your wheel space and just kind of just kind of finicky that thing in there So, so that's uh, got your axle protected in there, right? And you cut the slot in it so that uh, once you're glued in, you can just pop them out. Mix, 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 mix. That color right there. That's what you want. I'm not going to drop the whole trough, I'm just going to put a, a drop right there. This rear axle is going to be a little more trickier since they got a drop so far in there. Oh, good. My stick's not going to fit. <laughs> I'm going to keep a few pins around. And then just straight up and down. I don't want to move it side to side. 
see how that works out. No. All the way down. Get her seated on the bottom. Make sure you're down. Make sure it's down. For SNGs, I'm going to throw a little blob on top of this back one here, too. Work it down in the middle. All right, for luck, we will let gravity do the rest on that one. Make sure your shims are all good. Alright. Let it rot. <laughs> we'll come back in a little while, see how it how it does. It's all glued up. All right. Now let's see if this action will all come together. I'll get the uh, screws out of this side. All right. Axles are in there pretty good. Everything's spinning good. Like it's all straight. I think most of the time when it comes to these guys, you're probably not going to have to add any race weight to them afterwards. Look at the clearance. You know what? I still might go in there and do something with that because that's tight. All right, we have to go in there and rub that out a little bit, maybe. Get a load of what she looks like in the meantime, though. Nice. Oh, yeah. What's wrong with that? It says, I think I'm still going there and open that wheel well up just a little bit. It's still spinning okay. I'm just going to rub on the corners, but either or. Come on. Look at that. There you go.